coming to you from the website of QuickTendure.com. Uh, I am Madison Parker, and this is Bobby Plew. We're we are the survival instruction uh, portion or the survival instruction team that represents Equipped to Endure. We teach wilderness living, field craft skills, primitive technology, weapons development, and when I say weapons development, I mean primitive weapons. We don't do any high tech stuff. We strictly primitive. Uh, and we are here today. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, you know the, the development of a bona fide slingshot. Now don't. Don't misunderstand me, friends out there. They're you people that are, you know, do your slingshots. That, you know, the one thing about a slingshot in general, when you're talking about generalities and, and slingshots in general, you can go to most any of your high end sporting goods stores and buy a decent slingshot. And the learning curve for that slingshot is not going to be more than a day, probably eight hours of, of, of shooting, maybe maybe four hours and you're ready to go do some pretty amazing things with that slingshot but here at Equip to Endure our slingshot team and that's myself and Bobby and uh, Jared Evans he's not here now but the three of us we have developed a slingshot that cannot be confused with your standard store-bought Slingshots, and that, and that, and I include Theraband Gold in there too. Theraband Gold is not a slingshot that you can hunt with, not on a consistent basis. You can't get more than 200 shots out of a slingshot from Theraband Gold. I don't care what you're doing; 200 shots is it. And your your draw your draw style with the Theraband Gold is different. Your usually your frames are much smaller. Uh, just please don't confuse what that is with what this is and if you had somebody that was doing gear reviews a gear review on this I challenge there's nobody out there can do a gear review on this but me I'm it there ain't nobody Jared Evans can do a gear review Bobby Plew that's it nobody else knows how to use this and you cannot shoot this slingshot under normal circumstances unless you've got some kind of training this is not your store-bought run-of-the-mill mark one motto slingshot this is a slingshot that's been developed over a 40-year period from trial and error from hunting from living off the land from teaching wilderness skills and uh, primitive technology this slingshot is in a class by itself I could easily if I wanted to get 5,000 shots out of the slingshot before we break. I've had people walk up to me after five years of owning one of my slingshots and still be shooting the same tubes, the same bands, the same slingshot without any repairs or changes. 5,000 shots or in some guys cases, one guy walked up to me the other day, five years he's had a slingshot and the tubes are still good. Well, let me explain something to you too is that I've, how long have I been shooting that slingshot? About 90 days. About 90 days, and I got training. He trained me actually how to how to use it. I've used wrist rockets and the other ones that you buy at different stores in the past. He trained me how to use that, and I've already killed two woodchucks and a turkey with it. Yeah, killing a turkey. I mean, that's 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 amazing. I yep. mean, most people beg to kill a turkey with a shotgun or a bow and arrow, but uh, to do it with a slingshot is a very rare feat. Yep. Besides yourself, I think I'm the only one that I know of that's ever killed a turkey with a slingshot. Really? Besides you. Uh, myself and you, that's it. There ain't nobody. Unless somebody out there has done it and I don't know about it, but man, I've been on every forum. I've been on every website. I've been on every, I've talked to everybody in the country. I've sold these slingshots all over the world. I've sold them in England. I've sold them in, in Ireland. I've sold them in Germany. I've sold them in China. I've sold them in Australia. Uh, I've sold them all over every state in the United States. I've sold them in Mexico. I mean, I, I've, I've been with a slingshot for since I was 10 years old and I'm 60, so you can figure that out. So for 50 years, I've been shooting slingshots. And I finally come up with this design, but we're not here to tell you so much about slingshot, but rather we're gonna, we're gonna give you a blow-by-blow -blow account of how we build the slingshot. Uh, and you know, you just you know, we're not going to take the fine points, but you're going to see a rough idea of how we put this slingshot together. This is what we call a board cut. This is a laminated uh, slingshot. It's got Osage 
and I cut the I cut break the wood out myself. I cut the tree down. I split the wood off just I was slip, splitting uh, firewood. I got me a long, wide, flat piece. I take my draw knife, I flatten it out, I attach it to a multiplex, and then I pin it, and then I drill holes, and then I attach the rubbers, and I attach the pouch. So the whole process, it takes about three days to build one of these right here, three days. Uh, and that's glue time, drying time, and things like that. So it's not three days of hard work, but it's three days of time with regard to finally finishing your slingshot. So you really need instruction with this. This yeah. is not this is not one of the toys that you buy at a store. No. This is a killing machine. Yeah. This thing is. If, uh, I honestly believe that if you can sh if you can shoot it with a gun, and when, I mean we're not talking about bear and, and elk and moose and stuff like that, but but downsizing the game, uh, this is as good as any gun. Yeah, it is. Oh, absolutely. I agree. Absolutely. Now your distance, your standoff, not gonna be as as far as a rifle, obviously. Well, I hit that standoff. turkey at 40 yards. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I made kills on squirrels at, at 250 feet. You know, uh, 250 feet away, which you know for a squirrel, and you know you're looking at a squirrel at 250 feet, he looks the size of your thumbnail. Right. You know what I mean? At that distance, that's how big he is, and and that's what you got to hit it, and, and it's shooting up in the air and that, but. Uh, yeah, you know, anyway, we're going to get right to this. I'm going to show you how I lay it out, how I form it, how I cut it out, and then uh, we're going to send it down range and let Adam put it on Cook and Door website. So uh, we'll hope you enjoy. I appreciate y'all watching. We're going to show you how I lay this thing out. This is not a prototype. This is actually a, this is actually a, a, a form. And I, I wouldn't ever use this for a slingshot. This is what I draw from. I draw all my slingshots from this. Now this actual fork and the down, this 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 fork right here is made from board. But this original design was a natural fork. I cut from an oak tree and I put shelves on it myself. Now that fork is, I don't have that fork anymore, but I had shelves on it that I put on myself. And uh, so anyway, I traced that natural tree fork and made this. And now from this, I make this. Now we're going to use that, that Angelum. Today we're using Angelum Pedra, which is regular lumber. Unlike this, this was cut from a tree. This lumber here, it's not lumber. It was actually just the side of a tree, and I just smoothed it off. In this case, I got actual lumber, and this is what we call Angelum Pedra. It comes out of Africa. It's a very exotic wood, very hard wood. And it's going to laminate over the top of this multiplex, and then another layer range on Pedro. So it's going to be like that. That's what it's going to be. So I'm going to sit down here and I'm going to trace this thing out, and then I'm going to cut it out in the bandsaw. And you know, well, I'll start now so you can watch. It's real simple. Nothing to it. It's not rocket science, but it it does take time. Yeah. So what I'm doing here, folks, is I'm just basically tracing out my original design. Cut these out. Okay, here we have it. We are cut out. We have the three pieces one, two, three to make a hole. And now I'm simply going to laminate it by gluing it. I use a uh, type line two wood glue. Uh, you could use JB Weld, but honestly, for wood on wood, I don't think there's a better, stronger uh, bond than uh, standard wood glue, and in this case, premium wood glue uh, from Weatherproof. It's tight bond too. This is uh, it's what I've been using for a long time, and uh, I, you know, 
if you dumped it in the river and left it there for a couple of months, you'd probably have a uh, separation, but uh, it, it, it'd be hard, especially with one like this is so sealed up. I mean, this one's sealed with polyurethane, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I can't imagine this Type Bond 2 ever coming loose. So, Anyway, here's the way I do it. I just lay them out like this, and that, and that, and then uh, this one's going to go put this glue down at the bottom. I'll show you how I do it. I, I just I just get a light and all the excess that I have from this right here will go on the back side of this right here. Okay? So this is probably going to be enough for both sides of this. And the one thing about this glue, you do want to you do want to coat all sides. You don't want to. You don't want to leave any any of it undone. So you can see the excess from this is going on here. And I still have more on here than I need. So pull that down. get that glue fully all the way integrated into your wood down in the pores and once that wood gets in those pores and then you bond the two together I'll tell you what wood glue they, they say it's stronger actually stronger at the glue point or the joint in this case the joints flat they say it's stronger than actual than that wood in that same area without the glue on Then I'll get out of the frame for a second. Come back. there's a lot of room for error because you, once you get your uh, what I use I use the same tools almost exclusively and I, if I was going to build a bow out of a single stave from a tree trunk uh, you, we use a, what we call a farrier's file or a hoof file so it's a file that uh, a farrier uses when he shoes re, re, uh, shoes a horse and it's called farrier file and they're great for filing wood down and they take a lot of wood they got a, a rough side and then they got a, a coarse side they got a, a a little less so you know like a medium grit but uh um so you want to make sure you're fairly straight on this you know you don't want to get it too off offline so you want to be gentle with it bring your second one up here like so See that glue? That, see if you got more ex, more glue coming out than that, then you you're really you're really uh, probably just using too much glue. If it's dripping all over the place, you're you're definitely using too much glue.
Okay, that's it. So that's all we can do for now. Uh, that's why it takes time to build one of these slingshots. Uh, you know, I, I glue this, I clamp it. It says, you know, 30 to 45 minutes or an hour of clamp time. You can take it apart, but then you, you still can't work on it. It saves you about to wait 24 hours. So if I get in a real hurry, uh, a hurry I, I can push that together, but uh, I usually like to wait at least for a few hours before I even bother with unclamping. And then the next step is I'll take these pins or these oak oak dowel rods. That's a 5 16 inch oak dowel rod. And I will measure each piece, cut them on my saw, and then I will drill holes in here and I will pin it in about uh, four, maybe five places, you know, on that slingshot. So, so that way, not only is it glued laminated this way, but it's also connected to itself. You can see here, if you can see it on the camera, there's five of them here. I got one, two, three, four, five pins that hold this slingshot together, connect it to the wood. So it's not only connected through the wood, it's also laminated against each other. So, I mean, it's bulletproof. Yeah, you know, it really is. This thing, this thing lasts a lifetime. The way I got this thing developed, uh, they're just virtually, the only way to ruin it is throw it in fire. That'll be it. Anyway, so that's what I'll do next. As soon as the glue dries, we'll, uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll finish up and show you how to finish up a slingshot. Okay, I'm back. You know, we were showing you earlier uh, about the technology that goes into making a slingshot. You saw the draw out, you saw the layout, you saw the cut out, and then I think you saw the uh, lamination. So now it's laminated. This is uh, the same day that we did the lamination. It's several, several hours later. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and drill this and I'm going to pin it. And uh, I'll pin it with oak pins and uh, then we'll go from there and we'll decide how we're going to go from there. But uh, right now you don't want to put too much pressure on these joints because the glue hadn't really had a time to uh, cure yet. So but I'm going to go ahead and drill it and pin it. And, uh, drill and what I'm going to do next is is get these pins get these right here what I'll do is I'll measure the length based just roughly it had to be exact but you want to go ahead and have at least that much sticking out so it's all your cuts are going to be about that long what I'll do is I'll, I'll move this bow here that bow right there I make, I make that one cut. I do to make sure it's long enough here, long enough there, long enough there. Okay, so that's going to be my length. Then all you do is just. jungle area around here and 
a, a small knife, I mean, this is a Burt Foster, as fine as you can get, hand forged. This is a, a Master Smith blade maker, uh, one of the best in the world. I stack his, uh, quit, uh, his talent up with anybody. But uh, in this part of the country where I live in North Florida, the, the, the field and the, the wood is so heavy and so thick that a small knife like this is not adequate, not enough. So you, along with a small knife, you have to have a, a good size, a bigger knife. But anyway, that's getting off topic. And of course, this is another piece that I use, the bigger stuff. So uh, you gotta have it. In this part of the country, without it, you're stuck. Anyway, moving on, we're gonna put these pins. I've got this uh, grinder. What I do is this grinder is I turn it on and take these pins taper the tips. So that way they fit snugly nicely into that without peeling wood. Then we come back over here, and that's just a really pretty piece of wood. It's going to be a nice slingshot. And uh, take a seat, relax. Just want to relax if you can while you're working. That way it's easier to fit your stuff, and you don't get a bunch of frustration and problems. So that's going to fit nicely down in there. So what I'll do is I'll take this. You got to be careful with this too. You, you don't want to get so much in there that it's just excessive. There's no point in that. As this starts to drip through the bottom, I catch it on this little tab right here. I'm going to turn it like that. That way I don't get a whole bunch of glue dripping all over the table and the bench. Do get a little bit on you here. To get that thing completely coated. Turn this over like that. Make sure that, that glue's gonna get in there good. Okay, there's one. Now you can see when it starts to drip through here. I just put it on its side like that or put it down like that and it'll kind of coat the inside of that hole same time I'm getting glue all the way around on your on your pin and sometimes you get a little like this right here stick something in there kind of running around inside all the way around so that the entire hole is completely loaded up with shit right there you want to be you know I, I've done this where man there's just glue everywhere and it, it can't get that way you don't want to do that you want to just be you don't want to go excessive with it of course you want enough on there to where it's gonna well, 
gonna stand it up like that. Let that glue settle on the inside of that hole again. I'm out of glue here on this one. That's it. Now it's a little bit splashing around here and there, but overall, I'm pinning. Now I gotta let that dry, and uh, that that's gonna take another few hours. But uh, by this afternoon, another couple hours, we'll get in here and start grinding this thing out. So uh, you know, until next time, I we'll come back when this glue is dried, and uh, I'll show you how I feather it, how I form it. How I take the edges and corners and make them soft and smooth and round and uh, ergonomic so that uh, it feels good and comfortable in your hand when you draw it. This is a continuation of the slingshot that we make here at Equipped Indoor. This is a slingshot not for your average uh, plinking uh, beer can paper shooter. This slingshot is designed to hunt larger game than, and much larger game than most people are even thinking that they could do with a slingshot. Uh, I can tell you for a certain fact that I've personally killed it several, I've killed three deer with my slingshot. I've killed one turkey. Bobby Plude has killed a turkey, several groundhogs, and Bobby has only had his slingshot for 90, somewhere around that, we figure around 90 days right now, three months. So he's he gets his slingshot in his hand and uh, within, within a three month period, he's already killed a turkey and two groundhogs, probably several squirrels in that things like that and some birds but uh this is not your uh, run-of-the-mill store-bought slingshot trust me anyway we were showing you how i put it together and i didn't really i didn't want to show too much because i'm not giving away everything that i do here friends i want you to come and learn i want to share with you with the knowledge that i've developed in this slingshot business and how we integrate the slingshots with a wilderness living experience when you come to my place or you come up to Bobby Plute's place and you want to learn how to basically do wilderness living, extended stay wilderness living, primitive technology, primitive hunting, the technology that the uh, North American Indians used 200 years ago, this is what we teach, this is what we're excited about, and we want you to come and learn. But if you look now, you can see that I've already scalloped, if you want to call it that, this left-hand fork. Now this particular slingshot, we've decided is gonna be a left-handed shooter. So you're gonna hold it with your left, right here with your thumb. You can see how my finger's already got a shelf developed and I got a support right here. And so we shoot this way. This is our technique here. So now I'm not a left-handed shooter, but if I was, that would be the way I would hold it. Of course, it's got a lot of work to do yet. And we file it down with a farrier file. We got farrier files here. These are farrier files that we use for our bows, but we also use them for building our slingshots. So uh, farrier files are coming a lot, very useful around here. We use them a lot. We, we use uh, a few power tools on our equipment, but by and large, most of our work is done with just uh, hand tools. So anyway, I just wanted to show you a little short intro into 
you know, the continuation of what we started this this morning about, you know, starting out with a layout, and then we cut it out, then we laminated it, then we pinned it, and now we're cutting it down with a farrier file, and we're going to shape our handle here. We're going to put a little bit more technology into this uh, support. We're going to put some uh, holes in here so we can run through the, the fork with the tubes, and uh, we'll have this thing mounted uh, by tomorrow morning. Just a short video of uh, us here at Clifton Door some of the slingshots I wanted to lay out for you and show you some of the uh, different types of wood we use. Of course, this one right here is what we call, uh, it's either, you know, some people call it Coco Bolo, or uh, others have called it Bacati, and I, you know, Bacati comes from Mexico, Coco Bolo, I'm not sure where they grow that, I think it's South America, but big for knife handles, you know, people that make knives use it a lot. I know that uh, this Bacotti is a very expensive wood. You know, about a four foot piece of Bacotti costs you about $40. So uh, this is this is a rather expensive piece of wood to laminate, but anyway, it's good. And then you got this one here. This is, uh, this is Babinga. It's pretty well finished out. It's a left-hander. Now here's one of Red Oak. It just, we harvested right here, this wood here. We harvested right here in uh, Mariana. We, we do this ourselves. Of course, my Osage, Osage slingshot, this is Osage, the same wood we used to build bows with. This particular slingshot, I harvested this tree myself, so I didn't buy the lumber. But uh, some of it, uh, like here, here is a Bacotti slash, uh, uh, this is called Angelum Pedra comes out of South America, very exotic wood and very hard wood too. So I got a, a Binga, I mean, I'm sorry, a, a Angel and Pedro on one side and a Bacotti on the other. So, you know, that's kind of a neat slingshot. So anyway, we got different models, different types. I just put my knives out here. This is my uh, Burt Foster. This is a hand forged, handmade knife. This is a knife I got when I was in Jess School, Jungle and Zoc Environmental Survival Training in, in uh, the Philippines back before I deployed to Vietnam as a Navy SEAL, I was going through jungle training and this is one of the knives that I bought for five dollars that same knife. And this is a, a knife that I'm using now. This is a this is a, uh, a Parang. It's an Indonesian design made by Condor. But anyway, this is a great knife. We're really using this a lot. I'm running this through this test and uh, I tell you what, I'm loving this piece right here. This is one fine piece. Anyway, just thought I'd show you some of the knives and uh, slingshots we use. Just uh, something to kind of give you some looks. Now this right here is designed by Blind Horse Knives. Uh, actually uh, not designed, uh, actually designed by Bobby Plew, the survival instructor for Equip to Endure uh, uh, Northside. This is designed by Bobby Plew and made by, I think, Blind Horse Knives? Yeah. yeah. And this is his uh, field craft knife, his use, field use knife, his general purpose uh, utility. Very obvious, uh, it's got a Mercara handle, three pins. Beautiful, well, I mean, just fits in your hand like a glove. This is a very, very nice, nice uh, utility knife. Uh, field craft, survival, wilderness living, anything you need, this, this thing is really right on. He's got this thing decked out nice. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty piece. Anyway, so some of the stuff we're doing. Like I said, this is a Bird Foster. And forge, this is one fine piece right here. That Bird Foster, you guys got any idea about hand forging uh, versus stock removal? Huge argument out there. You know, that that argument will be going on for until time and eternity uh, uh, for finishes. Uh, that, you know, what's better, hand forge or stock removal? And you know, there's a lot of uh, opinions out there. And I think all steel to start with you understand all steel is forged so steel is forged period i mean that's all there is to it every every piece of steel you got anywhere you got is forged steel so with that in mind all all knives are forged in that in that regard but and then for the, the by the same token all knives even the stock removal i mean even the hand forged knives i have to be ground you know you have to grind them to shape after you shape them with a hammer still have to grind it, so there's a certain amount of stock removal in a hand forge knife too, so. Anyway, 
just thought I'd uh, share those few things with you. Anyway, y'all take care. Thanks for watching. I am Madison Parker from Equipped Endure. Uh, and remember, if you're not always prepared, you're never prepared.